Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create a scene like this in Blender 2.6. So, there's quite a lot to cover. There are, uh, of course, these uh, plants here, and this pathway, and we've got some rocks, and some trees, and puddles, and the rain. It's a very full little scene here, and it should be good. So, well, once that should be good, I mean you know, your final result provided you know, you've got a bit of uh, experience with Blender and you know what you're doing you know, this should end up looking uh, at the end of this tutorial looking roughly like this scene because I am going to be covering everything so, first of all um, we're going to be making all these different assets so the, uh, we're going to start off specifically with the plants and even more specifically this plant right here and then we're going to move into uh, other assets, I don't know, I haven't really planned this out, which is something I should have done but that's beside the point um, yeah, we may as well just get straight into it because you're going to be seeing the rest anyway so as I say, we're going to start off with this plant uh, this um, shrub right here, there's more over here and it's just a tall plant that's like a small tree and it's a small tall tree actually because, uh, you know, it's tall Okay, so uh, let's get into it then. Uh, we're just going to yeah, just come out of this and close that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, User Preferences, and in the Add-on section up here, we're going to type in Sapling in this search and tick this box here. I don't know when this was added in. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say where... Uh, when this was added into Blender, but currently I'm using uh, Blender 2.63, and I know it worked with, I think, 2. Points. Anything, you know, recent should have it. So when I say recent, I mean, you know, 2.58 and onwards, perhaps. I don't know when it was added in. Anyway, um, yeah. So as you can see, we've got this cube here, and we don't want that. We're going to delete it. And we're going to press Shift A, and then provided you've got that plugin activated, if you go to Curve, you can add a tree. And you can see, you know, it's not really much of a tree. It's just tall and it's like a, a wireframe thing or something. Um, we can edit this by pressing T, and provided you don't move it or anything, so I'll just get rid of these options. Uh, just add the curve, and then just instantly jump into this part right here. So first of all, we're going to want to make this, uh, you know, we need some depth and volume, so we just tick bevel, like that, and that will just give it some, well, you know, depth and volume. Uh, also, it's way too big, so we're going to need to bring down the scale, and believe it or not, if you set it to zero, it's actually quite good, because zero in this plugin doesn't mean just nothingness, it actually gives, it keeps its, uh, it just makes it very small, okay? Uh, and even then, it's not that small, okay? So, uh, what we're going to do now is uh, just do some adjusting to things, for example. Uh, we're going to set this from Tend Flame to Spherical, uh, because that would just adjust where the branches are longer, so you can see if we have uh, Tend Flame again. You can see that the widest point is sort of around here, and it sort of uh, it sort of shrinks off quite quickly here and it takes you know it's sort of it's not really in the middle of where the branches are but if we set it to spherical then it is it's sort of much more even so uh, with that done uh, of course you know it's just a shrub it doesn't have this huge trunk all the branches are sort of they start n relatively near the bottom so if we go to branch splitting and decrease the base size to like a point 0.1 or something then you can see we're getting the branches getting quite near to the, uh, the base of the tree and while we're in this splitting thing we may as well add some base split so just you know if you increase that there we can uh, just sort of splitting up the trunk a bit or the trunk of the tree and you can see that it's still all quite bunched up together so we can easily change that by going to the split angle 
and the split angle variation if we just increase this a bit you can see one of these branches is just going somewhere but if we just increase the angle then all of them sort of do that but you still want to keep the variation thing maybe set the angle to 30 uh, oh that's a down angle I want that 90 there we go uh, keep the split angle at about 30 there's a very fiddly like you know if you move it just a bit it just goes way up but we want this to be at 30 like that and this can be at 20 and ooh, that's not looking that great is it just uh... are we hmm right then yeah there we go and I know what you're probably thinking you think this branch that sticks out of the side is quite ugly but really you know it's best to have you know nature is never perfect like you'll very rarely see you know this nice shrub and it's got all the branches all symmetrical and lovely without any sort of you know like here where they're just going in this nice sort of circle or anything that just doesn't happen because in nature it's the imperfections that make things perfect as uh, so that's sort of my little motto for nature so if you're making a tree and it doesn't look perfect or it has weird places where there should be a branch in order for it to look nice or whatever then don't worry that much you know, if it's ridiculous then it won't even happen in nature then yeah you won't change some stuff but this little branch that sticks out to the side gives it a bit more character to the plant if that makes sense okay so with that said we're gonna keep that also uh, no there's no also about it uh, we're also gonna add a third level up here in this levels bit and what that would do is just add some more uh, you know the the way it's been split it then goes out into branches now these branches go out into branches and create these little sticks if that makes sense so um, that's looking good now before we do anything else I want to add the leaves okay so if you just tick show leaves then you can see that it's now very I don't, I don't know what the word is to describe it but the leaves are quite big so what we're going to do is set the leaf scale to like a point zero two five or something something quite small yeah that will do and we're also going to set the leaf x amount to 0.7 and that just yeah that's not looking too bad might just increase the size actually to a 0.05 because they are looking a bit small and decrease the amount of leaves to 15 and that just makes them uh, just makes a bit less dense and also uh, I think that's about it really uh, oh yeah, we're going to want to set the uh, the leaf shape to rectangular. You're probably wondering why, because that makes no sense. But we're going to put in a texture, um, like an alpha texture. And having those extra vertices will just increase the render time uh, for no real reason. But just having it at this really makes more sense. Now I'm just going to decrease the size again to 0 .0, 0 0.03 actually. And yeah, there we go that is not looking too bad at all now before we uh, go on and you know do anything else I'm going to go back to the geometry and set the handle type from vector to auto and that will just smooth out the branches a bit more and yeah like that and also I'm going to export the preset so if I just call it like a forest shrub or something and then export it that's quite important, it should now be here, yeah. We can now add much more of these with these settings right here. We don't have to redo it loads of times, and we can just create variations by increasing the random seed amount, even though half of them will be upside down. But a lot of them are, you know, upright, like, you know, to good size. So, let's just set this back down to zero. We now have our first shrub. We're going to get into the materials in the next part of the tutorial series that is